on our evaluation form, okay? So, ito, we will be pinning some comments from the audience as well. Don't forget, guys. Nakapag-register na ba kayo? Say yes, if yes. Okay, good. <laughs> and with that, I know everyone is still hyped from the previous performers and speakers, but don't you worry because our journey is still just begun. And to give us more knowledge and insights about today's topic, please welcome our second guest speaker for today. He is a highly accomplished data analyst, researcher, software developer, entrepreneur, and technologist. He holds significant positions in multiple organizations and initiatives, including being the co-founder and board of trustees of the Analytics Association of the Philippines. He is also the founder and executive director of Data Ethics PH and founder, CEO, and CTO of Serolytics Research Services. He is also a diverse person with a lot of range to your expertise, specializing in areas such as data literacy, AI ethics, um, data ethics, and social impacts of data. He actively utilizes computational social science, social listening, remote sensing, artificial intelligence, and data engineering to address pressing issues like human rights, public health, food security, political risk, and combating disinformation and infodemics. So very, very important to, lalo na sa panahon ngayon, di ba? Motivated by a strong desire to make a positive difference, he utilizes the power of big data and AI to shape a better future for society during the transformative fourth industrial revolution. Okay, excited na agad yung comment section natin. And now, it is time to be inspired as he shares his vast expertise and insights as we welcome him here in our event. With that, let's all give a big warm of applause or heart to ask or wow reacts to the remarkable Mr. Dominic Ligat. Sige, it looks like it's my turn to talk. So, sige, good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having me this afternoon. I was asked to talk about uh, uh, marketing and artificial intelligence. So, give me a second to present my slides. Okay. Yan, kita na ba? Yeah, perfect. Sige. So I'm going to, I'm titled my talk, Generative Marketing, because the whole point is everyone's talking about generative AI. And I think it's good to understand what are the impacts of generative AI on marketing. First, I wonder if any, everyone is familiar with the term ano, maximalist. Alam nyo ba yun? Kung ano ba yung maximalist? So we're used to the term minimalist. So maximalist is a term in commercial photography. Um, when you say maximalist, ito yung itsura. Parang you cram as much information and material on an image. Okay. Here's another version. So I generated these images using uh, AI. No? Uh, it, it's an application called Midjourney. It's one of the most popular image generation tools today. And uh, if, you're, if you've used these tools, marami yan, Stable Diffusion, Dali, you basically, parang chat GPT, you have a prompt, and then it generates an image. So the interesting thing about these images, I just prompted it by saying maximalist marketing. And then yan ang lumabas. So on the one hand, it's very, very cool. On the other hand, makes you wonder, paano kaya naisip ng computer or ng AI now, this is what maximalist marketing means. Okay. Well, on the on the one hand, I like that it's not biased because it came up with uh, a male and a female. There was another instance where I gave a talk. I said maximalist journalism. Puro lalaki yung lumabas. So that's an interesting one. So apparently in marketing, there isn't necessarily a gender bias. But it's very Western, obviously, and very Caucasian. So that's interesting to think about. Um, very Barbie ang dating niya, no? So that's maximalist marketing. 
Sige. So, <clears throat> generative marketing, uh, I wanna, I'm going to cut it up into two chunks. This is actually because it comes from two separate presentations I did. No, One is on content, which mirrors what I told the journalist sector. And the other one is about creativity, which is an older discussion I have with advertising agencies. And I think if you want to get parang the lowdown on how uh, AI relates to marketing, you might consider some of the discussions I'm going to bring up. Okay, so first, uh, let's talk about generative AI. You know? uh, when people talk about AI today, most likely they are talking about generative AI. And what's the difference between discriminative and generative? Well, discriminative is the AI that we were used to up until recently. So this is uh, uh, algorithms that interpret data. They're still quite important. In fact, later when we, when we talk about the use cases for marketing, a lot of it is actually generative AI. So it, in other words, AI that interprets data for you. So you give it a picture of a cat, tells you it's a cat, or you give it a picture of a person pretending to be a cat and it'll say it's not a cat. No? Generative AI is the parang conceptual opposite. Instead of interpreting data, it provides data. So you can give the AI a picture of a cat and it comes up with variations of a cat. Or you can prompt it with the word cat and it creates cats. That's the difference. So these two approaches to AI are important if you want to talk about marketing because they represent parang two halves of the same coin. When you think about marketing strategy, when you think about business, you're either coming up with analysis or you're creating uh, I know, assets for marketing. So discriminative AI, I would say that's the perception side. And uh, generative AI is kind of the creative side. Or kumbaga sa brain, uh, discriminative AI is the left the left side of the brain. May mga ganyan, traditional, no? And then generative AI is the right side of the brain. So when we talk about generative AI, it's it's all about creating output. So you can come up with random faces, as they call mga deep fakes, or you can come up with images, or you can have conversations with a chatbot. Basically, the chatbot is like chat GPT. It's creating text. It's not retrieving text from some database. It's creating it dynamically based on uh, patterns it learned. Actually, this is a big, uh, I would say, misnomer to confuse chat GPT to a, self en uh, to a search engine. Kasalanan ng open AI yan. It's not a search engine. A search engine retrieves data from a database. Kunyari, may list listing ka of links and articles. You search the word AI. It will look for any links and articles that match. Yan, ilalabas ni Google. Well, ChatGPT and its uh, parang ano, brothers is actually creating the, the text as you go along. It predicts a word based on prior words. So it's literally writing new content as you go along, which is statistically probable, but na sometimes it's not factual. I think that's also where the problem lies. Parang if you treat mga chatbots as a search engine, magugulat ka na lang baka it's starting to write fiction na. So that's the first half of the parang the impact on uh, marketing that I can think of, the content creation. No? So um, similar to other fields like journalism, marketers can expect to increase their productivity using generative AI. So four areas of productivity, creation, analysis, uh, interaction, and uh, other types of content like images and audio. No? So for example, uh, the outline of this slide But literally, I I told the uh, ano Chat GPT, can you give me a ten point slide deck on this topic? And then linabas naman niya. And then that was the basis for me to ano, come up with material. So can you imagine? Could have taken me easily another hour or two to come up with this, but with AI, I'm bilis, no? Um, I don't know if you've seen this. Um, I find this uh, one of the most compelling applications right now. Yung Learning Studio AI. You literally type a prompt like a topic, and it will create a full-blown training course in 90 seconds. So this is obviously disrupting the education sector, uh, online learning, but it's great for content cre creators. If you want to come up with an online course about whatever topic you want, and education is a form of marketing also. You know, you, you want to educate people about something. Ambiles. And this gives you examples of how this kinds of technology can automate uh, mga tasks that would have taken forever. Apart from creation, you can also use uh, you know, generative AI to analyze content. And actually, 
I'm a content creator already. I come up with videos and podcasts related related to AI. And that requires that I ingest and consume lots and lots of content. No? So itong, for example, itong article about si Senator Marcos looking at jobs no, affected by AI. I don't have the time to read the whole thing. So I just ask uh, the chatbot, can you give me a five-bullet summary of this? So just copy the text, put it there, and then boom, no, you're done. And that helps me with ingesting lots of information quickly. So if you're into marketing also and you want to do a lot of market research very quickly, this can be very helpful. Uh, and you can do it many ways. No? Just getting a bullet summary is good, but you can also prompt generative AI to be more specific. Like, okay, here's an article about the Amazon workers walking out because of uh, unfair treatment and benefits. So I said, I don't have the time to read this. So I said, okay, I get this text, paste it on the chatbot, and I say, please summarize this text using the following, no? plot, tone, theme, setting, conflict, characters, point of view, basically the seven elements of literature. And you know, no? it gives me a, 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 no, a summary. So again, if you're in the creative fields, if you're into copywriting, if you want to content create, uh, creation, uh, the analysis component is very awesome. No? I find that really useful. And then finally, um, you might have documents that you want to ingest. So rather than copying everything, then you can just upload it as a PDF. So this is an app called Chat PDF. And what it allows you to do is upload uh, any PDF, like ito, I uploaded a poem, yung Desiderata. And you can talk to the PDF. Like, okay, can you give me advice on how should I uh, feel better after a traumatic situation? Because itong Desiderata is more of a kind of a inspirational poem. So sinasagot niya ako based on its uh, no, content. So this can be great for research. This can be great for analyzing content in a non-traditional manner, etc. And then the images, uh, I used Midjourney earlier. There are other apps like Crayon, for example, can generate lots of art and drawings. I like Crayon because uh, malalim yung free tier niya. So if you want to play with that. Uh, there's also Scribble Diffusion. Ito kwela. You can draw a sketch and then you put a prompt. Kunyari, I drew this thing on the left. Sabi ko. And then I put a prompt. Um, a peaceful, peaceful scenery beside the lake with rolling hills. Tapos gumawa siya ng image based on that sketch. Um, Eleven Labs is an AI that can generate voices. No, I use this in ads, for example. Um, you can you can use uh, AI to basically give a voiceover. Kawawa dyan yung mga voiceover artists. No? And finally, uh, you can also use AI to create music. So I use Soundful for ma background music, for example. No? So that's <clears throat> the first half of what I wanted to share. No? The, the kind of the promise of generative AI and... Basically, it's productivity, efficiency, customization, research and development, anything creative. So this is the right-hand side of the brain. And um, to the extent that, let's say, in, in the art scene, it's very contentious. I think they have issues around uh, copyright, productivity, blah, blah, blah. Um, for, for, for marketers, productivity means profit. So the more you can produce with less time, the better. And then I don't think naman marketers have an issue on this, but... Uh, sometimes I'm I'm surprised at how there's a massive pushback on technology for getting to art. Pero sabi nga ni George Lucas, all art depends on technology. I mean, outside of singing with your bare voice, anytime you want to do an artwork, you have to use some form of technology, you know, whether it's a paintbrush to a camera to Photoshop and now to AI. So there really isn't a dichotomy there. No? Uh, pauso lang yan ng mga tao who tr try to be traditionalists for the sake of traditionalists. Uh, and in fact, photography, I don't know if people are aware, as late as the 1900s, it was not considered art, can you believe? It took 100 years. Pero ngayon, photography is up there with fine art. Uh, the issue before was an, uh, uh, a camera or a machine capturing light can never be equivalent to a painter with a brush. Can you believe that? And uh, I think this is drilling down to kind of some deep philosophy about creativity. Uh, sabi nga ni Michelangelo, no? translated, every block of stone has a statue inside of it. It's the task of the sculptor to discover it. So it's like thinking that art isn't so much created but discovered. So you're looking for a message or you're looking for an expression. And when you get to marketing, that's basically just industrialized art or industrialized creativity. That's specifically for a client, no? for a brand, for a product. 
So it's really more the case in marketing where you really need to accept that all these technology tools are good for marketing. And marketing isn't just expression. You have to look at ROI. You have to look at effectiveness. And this is best done using data no, and AI. So perception and creativity are really interlinked. But you know, um, I remember when I first gave this half of the talk, there was a prevailing massive pushback no, by basically marketers, not advertisers. You know? um, this this article came back came out, I think, 2018. But eh? you can see the tone here. No? You can be at the right place at the right time, but what's the point if you're dull, uninspiring, unattractive, and unempathetic? Lupet, no? Data, no matter how big or accurate, can facilitate, but it can't consummate. Automation can lead the horse to water, but it can't make it drink. Only world-class creative intuition can do that. Can you imagine people saying this? Now, I will, the guy who said this is there, you know, he's a popular ad executive. And then I wonder what they think now you know, when uh, you, know, you can generate basically any type of art from a machine. Siyempre, the execution part, kinuha na ng machine, but the, the actual intention and design, that's still based on the human. Pero yun nga, back in the day, the argument was a machine can't even execute properly. So why consider it for strategy or ano, or intent? Ngayon, pareho na. You can understand uh, strategies and customers better. And then you can create art and creatives that appeal to them. So I think the bottom line here is we have to dispel this parang false dichotomy no, between humans and machines. Actually, kasalanan ng, ano yan, eh, ng advertising then at Hollywood. Uh, it's it all it all started with this 1997 match between Gary Kasparov, who's a chess master, the best in the world, and then IBM designed the computer program, si Deep Blue, and Deep Blue beat Kasparov. Actually, to be fair, uh, it was a series of draws, no? and Kasparov quit the in the last game, and he was shocked that an algorithm could beat him, because He's the epitome of chess genius at that time. He's still playing, by the way, and he's one, still one of the best. Pero at that time, he was the best. And he went into some depression after he got beat by uh, no, IBM. And the bottom line here is, you, why would you get depressed? You shouldn't be depressed. No? Um, yun nga lang, it's this technology kasi that has evolved. And the evolution of technology is so fast. You know, Humans back in 1997 and humans today, they, they're this, the same humans. No? But if you look at the computer back in 97 and the computer today, ang layo na nung evolution. So that should give you some reason to pause. No? Na, okay, these technologies are evolving faster. How do we, how do we manage it? Actually, using chess as an analogy, um, not many people know about the freestyle chess tournament. This is where actually you can use a computer to fight computers or to fight chess masters and one of the re best references i have was in 2005 where a pair of amateur players not even rated no? grandmaster rate wala they're like beginners using three computers were able to defeat grandmasters and uh the best chess ai at the time no? nowadays yung mga chess ai is super halimaw na kaya anytime you find players uh, parang there was this recent, I don't know if you're following the chess scene. No? There's a recent scandal involving uh, chess master si Hans Niemann. Kasi he beat um, si Magnus Carlsen, the reigning world champion, very easily. And they were saying, Nako nandaya siguro tong si Hans Niemann. Kasi he fights like a computer. <laughs> yung ano, example. But again, uh, you can't discount na it's possible for a human to get to that level. Pero it's unbelievable. So now we're at a point where we're already acknowledging that computers are superhuman in chess. So it will be very, it will be likely that at some point, very soon, computers will be superhuman in other areas of endeavor. But each endeavor is separate. So the chess AI won't be able to drive a car. The car AI won't be able to play chess. So these are examples of what we call narrow AI. No? Uh, I think your generative AI is particularly disruptive because there are many applications. Because it creates content. And uh, surprisingly, a big chunk of our content is based on text, books, uh, websites, reports, essays, for example. So people didn't realize that by coming up with a, with a better chatbot, you've actually disrupted human life. So this brings us to kind of my point about what is creativity? Is it something related to execution? Is it something related to you know, uh, uh, the, art, the art form? the message, 
And if you talk about marketing, it's even more, uh, I would say, poignant because marketing is a business decision. Sometimes I wonder uh, whenever I meet marketers who kind of like to refer them to themselves as artists, usually mga creatives yung mga ganyan. And I'm saying, yeah, you, you may be artistic, but creativity isn't just artistic expression. I can be creative with words, for example. Does that make me less creative than you? Uh, and then we're not naman, you know, working in an art studio. We're working in a company. So it doesn't matter how fancy you think your creativity is. If it doesn't help sell the product, if there isn't any result, then wala. No? And that's good to reflect on that no? as, uh, you know, as you start navigating your careers in marketing, for example. I started my career in, in marketing, although I had a finance background. Here's an example of an early print ad in the 1400s. No? I don't know what it says, but I think it's about selling a carriage at that during the, the Middle Ages. No? And the, the whole point here is the platforms and the environment by which we do marketing has evolved. No? We've gone from brick and mortar to web-based, from web-based to mobile, which is smaller, uh, also web, but smaller, then mobile to social, which is just a more curated website. And then now we're at the chat level. And before you know it, we'll be at the augmented reality level also. So the discipline is the same. The executions have changed. So that's worth reflecting on. And more and more, the executions today are data-driven. So if I were to think about what are the top four things I would be thinking of when incorporating artificial intelligence and marketing, I'd be looking at these four things. Does the AI help me understand my customers better? Does the AI help me attribute marketing activity so that the results are better? Uh, does the AI help me curate content? And finally, does the AI help me create content? Okay, by curation sa creation. And then uh, an even more, I think, uh, I would say important concept is the idea of the customer life cycle. I don't know if you guys have studied this in some form. But in any company or in any brand, if you're a marketer, you have three jobs. Your job is to get customers or acquisition. Your job is to retain them and have them use your products and then prevent them from leaving loyalty. Siyempre, you have salespeople. They're the ones who do the tactical work. But more, more and more, you don't even need salespeople. Nga. You just need a very, very good mobile platform. But your strategies are important to implement. So, for example, if you're into the acquisition space, syempre, you have to understand your population. You have to look at uh, who are similar to customers we already have so we can target them. Uh, your, your communications content where AI can come in. A-B testing to see which works better. Once they are already in the relationship, you now have to maximize that relationship. How many products can you sell them, cross-sell them, recommend something to them? That's why very uso uso yung recommendation engines in any online platform like uh, e-commerce. If you bought one product, it will suddenly advertise you similar products, products that go along with it. Parang may encourage yung sales activity. And then finally, when you're already uh, a long-time customer, how do you avoid churn? No? Churn is the term they use. How do you avoid losing customers? And how do you maximize the value? So yun yung three. And all three have their respective uh, you, you can see each of these dots is is an ai model no? uh, that can be deployed no? uh, at each point in the in the life cycle no? yeah here um to avoid churn you have to make sure that you're managing sentiment properly you're maximizing lifetime value but if your emphasis is you're on a new department or i know uh business it's really about understanding the population and getting them to act okay i'm nearly at the end of my talk but i just want to highlight some quotable quotes without data you're just another person with an opinion i keep bringing this up whenever i address a marketing or advertising audience because of all of the industries i've ever worked with and you know this is just me one the the industry that has the most opinionated people usually are marketers because <laughs> that's the nature of the game. And now we're in an era where AI can generate opinions already. So the value of these parang uns unsubstantiated theories and opinions is much lower. Shempre, I don't want to be a, like a purist arguing for the machines. But I think marketing it has a, a challenge to remain more rigorous and effective. 
And nowadays, marketing departments are being downsized. Advertising agencies are being fired. You know why? Because random yung mga outcomes nila. Eh. And we even have stupid agencies using stock footage. Mga ganyan, di ba? I mean, we have to elevate the the practice to a higher level. You know, it's not and the and the fees that these people charge. It's outrageous. So in an era of AI, kumanda na yung mga ganyan, you know. We won't we cannot afford that kind of ano, execution anymore. And I think bottom line, machines are not curiosity is really the most uh, I would say the hallmark of creative people. And that's me quoting Leo Burnett, you know, it's my, the uh, progenitor of many agencies. You know, you don't fear machines and AI. You use them to expand your, your creativity and your awareness. So before I close, I just want to highlight some ethical considerations, of course. These technologies are not perfect. So it's people who know the downside uh, best can navigate the upside. Number one, AI makes mistakes, like humans. But the kinds of mistakes AI makes are interesting. They're, they are statistical mistakes. Like ito, uh, Raisin Bread or Chihuahua. <laughs> or uh, nato, bagel and poppy. It's because of the nature of the data. And the only way to avoid this is to train AI on better data and to curate that data. The other part that we need to be mindful of is uh, unintended uh, interactions. No? Lalo na when you talk about interfaces like chatbots that have a high human touch to them. Like this man talking to a chatbot got depressed, committed suicide. This woman naman was already depressed talked to a chatbot, fell in love with the chatbot, and now wants to marry the chatbot. So it's not just about the machine. It's about how do these uh, you know, systems and tools change us as human beings. One of the most contentious, contentious challenges now is copyright for Ladona for images. And this needs to go through its natural cycle with the legal uh, you know, parties. Like Stability AI is being sued by Getty Images. It's the image of Stability, it's the image of Getty. And according to Getty, the only way this could have happened is if stability trained on copyrighted images. And if you look closely, pati yung logo ng Getty images, no? medyo na-reproduce ng AI. No? So I think in this case, baka talo si stability. But again, do you want a world where everything is copyrighted or a world where everyone can be creative or a world that can do both? I think that's the challenge now to the copyright situation. Uh, of course, another downside is since this makes content creation very efficient, the misuse naman of the content uh, is the problem. Like disinformation, of course. Satire is legit. But how do you know if it's for fun lang or talaga may pinapatamaan? So I just want to close with these points. Uh, AI has the potential to improve marketing, productivity, interactivity, and research. Uh, we have to be mindful of safety, copyright, and disinformation. Uh, and focus on ethical standards. We need to break the existing bias of human versus machines and embrace the potential of these tools while keeping our integrity as media practitioners. Marketing, I would consider marketing, media, and journalism are in the same boat. And then creativity, man and machine is the ultimate expression of intelligence. And yeah, before I close, I want to invite everyone. I'm uh, building a following on all platforms. Uh, I started doing webinars on AI uh, about two months ago, and uh, I just finished one right this morning about social impact. So please uh, check me out on TikTok, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, I have an open invitation to do a free one-hour briefing to any company or institution who want to learn more about AI. Not because I'm the old, I'm the best person to talk to, pero parang no one else is doing it, so I'll do it first just to get the ball rolling. Uh, I've been publishing weekly webinars on artificial intelligence. Uh, they're they're posted on my YouTube channel. Just look for Doc Ligot on YouTube. And then finally, uh, my company. Uh, so I run three AI companies. One company, Serolytics, is focused on design uh, use cases for AI, including marketing. So we're going to be offering design workshops with AI for any industry, especially uh, the creative industry. So if you're interested to look into this, please send an email to support at serolytics.com or follow Serolytics on Facebook. So that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for having me. And yeah, if there's anyone with questions, I'm happy to entertain. Yes, and thank you so much to you too, Mr. Dominic. It was really an enlightening speech and I'm sure there's still like so much to unpack for AI. No? I feel like what really stood out to me was, aside from the different types of AI mismo, 
it's the fact that just like what the previous speaker mentioned that it's not really necessarily a threat but more like a tool it's just that we also have to know how to use it responsibly and uh, given that we also have some questions for you with the q a starting with patricia gonzalez says, asking question paul what role does generative AI play in revolutionizing industries and driving innovation in today's rapidly evolving technological landscape? Yeah, so if you caught that uh, one of the early slides, the biggest impact is really content curation and creation, which is productivity. So the more you speed up relatively manual work, the better. Then the other part is more on creativity and strategy. Um, I think the lead should still be given to humans because we're ultimately the responsible parties in any 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 activity but you can use ai to give you strategies no and ideas in a very quick fashion parang sa ano when you use ways you can choose where you want to pass no you can give you can ask ways give me three more alternate routes which may take longer but at least you don't have to go through the side streets mga ganyan may mga parameters na siya so think of AI like a ways app, but for marketing or other other purposes. The point is, you already know where you want to go, but you want to see the variations and you want to get up to date statistics on what's happening. Okay, as a ways, there's an estimated time of arrival, for example. So ganyan, I would treat AI in the same bucket. Mm, really good tip. And then we also have another one from Nicole saying hello. Are there any risks of over-relying on AI in marketing and how can they be mitigated? Well, yeah, I mentioned the ethical challenges, yung copyright, for example, and uh, satire, disinformation. Um, I think the mitigation is tao. We need to have rules and oversight. And for example, there's this story of a lawyer who relied on ChatGPT completely lang for his cases, only to find out na fake yung mga cases na linabas ni ChatGPT because... Mali naman yung gamit niya. You don't ask a chatbot like a zero-shot blind question and expect facts. No? You can you can ask it questions about parang high-level general topics, but when you ask about specific names or people, nakakabokya, bokya siya. So you have, to, you have to be mindful there. And yung guidelines for use should come from us. No? I think the, yun na nga, it's this man versus machine thing that we need to parang let go of. Kasi parang... People can't imagine working with AI. They're only saying tao lang or AI lang, pansin nyo. And the, the fear is there, no? So if you're working with AI, not in place of AI, I think you can't go wrong with that. Oh, And then I feel like when papasok yung like, when ba nagiging accountable ba? Or sino magiging accountable in those types of like questions or like cases? Then we also have another question here from John Mark. AI and humans should not be seen as polar opposites, but rather they are part of a continuum that drive technological advancement while some politically resonating human emotions and experience. So it's more of a key takeaway pala instead of a question. So thank you so much, John Mark, for sharing that. Many thoughts on this, Kuba, Sir Dominic? Yeah, totally agree. And yun nga eh, sabi nga ni George Lucas, all art mm-hmm. depends on technology. Technology comes from humans. Data comes from humans. So why are we suddenly parang, ano, reverting to Terminator ang dating? No? Uh, <laughs> and kahit si Terminator, ginawa rin yun ng mga tao. No? Uh, Skynet was created by humans. So, yun na nga, eh, parang we have to get out of that Hollywood type thinking when it comes to these issues. Right. So parang parang magmahal natin muna masyado ilagay sa pedestal yung AI as something that would really end certain aspects of life natin. But like what you said, it is a tool, something we can work with. We just have to be mindful with how we work with it also. So thank you so much, Mr. Dominic. And hopefully all of our futurists have already had their questions answered. And to give our gratitude to you also, Sir Dominic, we present to you this certificate given this July 8th for sharing your knowledge during the seminar event entitled Lore, the Marketing Apocalypse. So thank you so much, sir. And let's all give him a round of applause or heart for acts the man here in the comment section. So thank you, Adrian, Christelle, Yasmira, and Carl. I'm sure you all enjoyed the talk and the learnings we shared from Mr. Dominic. And stay tuned because we will also have more stuff to share with you guys here on Lore, the Marketing Apocalypse. 
But before we continue the excitement, is everyone still all right? More hard to ask Najan, guys. Kinsan the same. Thank you, Sir Dominic, Alicia, Yan Yan. Thank you, guys. Ayan, yung mga pa-attendance and greetings din tayo 